Welcome to Restart India Live. You know, this is all about real challenges and real conversations. I'm Lakshmi Prathuri, and on behalf of everyone at Restart India, I thank you for joining us today. You know, Restart India started more than a year ago as a way of connecting with you as part of Restart India movement. We started off this initiative by setting up an advisory board who could answer questions of nano businesses. And then we moved on to helping them restart by taking on ground activities. What started as just an online Q&A has now turned into a movement uh, across India. And uh, it's really, really close to my heart for two different reasons. One, the pandemic has taught me that relationships are the most important thing. And uh, the second thing it also taught me is that we all need to work on our purpose a lot sooner. And we are really fortunate at Inc. and at Muthur FinCorp to do something uh, that we feel very strongly about that's purposeful. So there are the two reasons I'm happy about is, one is I'm in the company of right people my friend Johnny and uh, his whole team at Muthut Fincarp uh, has been a great, great partners in this. And the second reason I'm really excited about is the purpose of Restart India itself to help nano businesses across India. So with that, I'm very pleased to introduce the host and my good friend, Thomas John Muthut. We are really fortunate to partner with you, uh, Johnny, and with that, on to you. Thank you, uh, Lakshmi. Uh, as always, uh, whatever you said is absolutely, you have taken words from my mouth. Uh, the Restart India has been a, a project which we started uh, just after the first lockdown. We had uh, interacted with uh, our customers, uh, which are the low income customers. Uh, during the lockdown and understood what are their uh, next need and what are their problems and what would be of help to them. And we understood most of them needed uh, advice on, on restarting their business. And uh, that is how we came with the idea of this Restart uh, India portal. And uh, now we have uh, uh, traveled a good uh, mile and uh, we are now here to be enablers for the nano micro uh, enterprises and uh, the pandemic has really uh, proved that uh, the nano and uh, micro enterprises are a need of the hour and uh, these uh, businesses should be uh, 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 promoted and supported and that's what uh, we are trying to do now. And uh, the next step is to make, make them relevant for tomorrow. So to make them relevant for tomorrow, what we should be uh, looking at technology adoption. And uh, in many ways, uh, during this pandemic, uh, most of these uh, nano micro business have uh, adapted and have uh, taken technology uh, as, as one uh, immediate step that they could take to uh, promote their business. So uh, now from here, we need to take them to the next level. And that is what uh, uh, Inc. and Muthut is jointly trying to do through the uh, Restart India initiative. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we would also help them to uh, 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 sell their products through to uh, on a, on the uh, digital platform. So wherever they need help, uh, we would uh, support them. Sure, thank you, Jani. Uh, and I would love for all the listeners, our whole community, uh, to support the cause and shop local to help the small businesses around you because they are the lifeblood of our uh, system. And uh, we really want you to prefer to shop local. And if you feel any small business around you needs help, uh, please write to us. So with this, um, I want to come uh, to the 
most important part of this session, which is to introduce you to a wonderful person, an entrepreneur and an Inc. fellow, uh, and one of the most brilliant people I met. And this is the kind of person that inspires me to uh, do what we do at Inc. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Ankit Agarwal, founder and CEO of Fool. Um, Ankit is a social entrepreneur. Uh, he's, uh, he's really been the pioneer of a technology called flower cycling. You'll know more about it as we talk. It's about converting waste from places of worship, you know, flowers from anywhere into patented lifestyle uh, products. And there is a larger cause. One is to save river Ganges. And uh, there's another cause, which we will talk about later about the kind of people he employs and what is his goal of how he wants to change the lives of his own team members. Um, He's, uh, you know, ever since he's been an Inc. Fellow, he's gone on to many, many, many accolades. Uh, he's been awarded as Fast Company's 2018 World Changing Ideas. Uh, Help Us Green is world's first lean and profitable solution uh, to solve a monumental problem. It's bringing hope to revive the lifeline of more than 420 million people, which is the Ganges. Uh, Ankit has worked on sustainability project across 26 countries, and is among 21 young leaders selected for extraordinary skills by the Asia Society. Uh, recently, Ankit was named in the Forbes India 30 Under 30 and received U United Nations uh, Climate Action Award. He's also the recipient of Unilever Young Entrepreneur Award, uh, GSG Millennial Honor, and prestigious United Nations Young Leader for Sustainable Development Goals. So with all that, uh, I would like to welcome Ankit. Uh, Ankit, we are really delighted to uh, have you here. Um, and we would love to talk to you about exploring purpose-driven and impact-oriented uh, businesses. We would love to talk to you about that. Welcome, Ankit. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so I'm yeah. very happy to be here. And what <laughs> I just heard, uh, the Restart India mission, it sounds very, very challenging. And it, is, I yeah. think, a step in the right direction with small yeah. businesses like us getting support from the Muthut group. I think yeah. uh, if more businesses follow suit, uh, our country would be yeah. a way better place to live. You know, um, Ankit, I think it'll be great to start with your personal journey um, sure. and uh, say that, you know, you used to work for large corporations. You are, a, uh, you know, this is a path you took. So tell us a little bit about how this came about. Sure. So uh, I have a Czech friend, his name is Jakob. So he had once come down to India and uh, at that point in time, uh, ma'am, something up. Yeah. At that point in time, I was working with Semantic Corporation as an automation scientist and Kuba had come down to India and he wanted to see the real Indian culture, which is like tier two, tier three towns. He had spent time in Bangalore, Mumbai. He was like, no, this is like any other metropolitan. I want to see the real India. So I asked him, okay, come down to my hometown, which is Kanpur. And I went to Kanpur to just uh, give him the real taste of how we Indians live, our culture and everything. And see, in my hometown, Kanpur, there are not many places that I can take someone to visit. So I took Kuba to the ghats of the river Ganges. And luckily, unluckily, that date was Makar Sakranti. So Makar Sakranti is this festival that marks the ending of winters. And every all the farmers, everyone take a dip in the river Ganges and thank the Surya, the, uh, the sun god uh, for the summers to come in because it's now time for them to like cut their uh, uh, ag, ag way and everything. <clears throat> so what happened was, Kuba and I sat this upon this guard for about 60 minutes. And he started counting. He counted around 147 people, including women and small children, taking a dip in the very dirty water. And some people were even doing Surya Namaskars. Uh, a person had set up a shop nearby, filling uh, like selling plastic containers. People were filling this, those containers with that water, drinking it. And the water was actually so dirty that we didn't even want to touch it. And uh, so we broke into a conversation and he started questioning me, why are these people even doing this? And I tried to explain him, this is the river Ganges, this is a goddess, this is a lifeline. Uh, don't worry, we have been doing this for centuries, nothing happens. 
this water as self healing properties and god knows what and uh, mm-hmm. so uh, he said that if this river is so religious so river why don't you try and clean it and i was like no uh, this is self cleaning don't worry and he asked me okay why is it so dirty and the reasons were innumerable there is fecal sludge refuse from tanneries everything used to go inside the river and suddenly he said that why don't you do something about it and i was like bhai uh, boss this is not europe this is india like we are like the size of whole of your continent don't worry and uh, like he said no seriously why don't you start and i was like what do i do like how can i do something about it and then he said the river thames was even dirtier than this i was like are you joking the river thames really? and then we actually googled and we saw that at one point of time the river thames and river rhine were dirtier during world wars and and all of this was happening suddenly a nearby temple dumped in a tempo full of flowers in the water and what happened was all the oil or pesticides that might be there in the water that started to uh, come on the surface of water and light started refracting through it and i was mm-hmm. like wow i have seen my parents put temple waste in the water i have seen my grandparents put temple waste in the water everyone i know puts religious waste temple waste either near a tree in the temple or uh, in the river ganges no mm-hmm. one has ever thought of this practice and uh, has even uh, is there something even like called as flower pollution so that is how the seed was sown i went back to pune and i my heart was not at rest and i felt that i want to do something i wanted to do something and after uh, like a few months i decided to quit semantic and uh, get into this full time uh, i had, the only cue point i had was that i wanted to solve the temple waste problem and i don't come from a business background nothing i was working i was a science or engineering guy working on software and code so the first thing that i did was i started mapping the journey of the flower what mm. where does a flower come from where does it go who are the different stakeholders what what are the touch points in the life of a flower and is there someone who is doing about it what is the quantity of flowers that go into the water is there some data around it is there some regulation around it and i found that there's nothing no one even thinks about this everyone felt that oh solve the bigger piece which is the tannery is which is which is the fecal sludge no one was focusing on flowers and everywhere i went like um, some bigger temples had some composting machines but they were not being used and uh, everywhere i went like i was like 25 26 then and every every one was like no you're mad go back to your boss go back to your office don't do and all of these things nothing will happen you you don't touch temple waste and so that even made my resolve harder that i want to solve this problem so that is that is how food like literally started and uh, i started with the problem did having not having a solution and slowly and slowly uh, what i did was i went to every single b plan in the competition in the country where like i would get like a 2000 rupee as a prize or maybe a 5000 rupee as a prize maybe then a 10000 and i would take that money uh use it to do certain experiments try and build a product buy a machine to be things like that so that is our full start so your journey has been so tough and where are you today okay uh, so where are we today so so uh, so now uh, we have now literally developed the flower cycling technology uh, we've raised uh, around 3 million dollars in equity Uh, our last round uh, re- uh, from uh, Miss Alia Bhatt. Then uh, today uh, we have around uh, more uh, like this year we will close in around two million dollars in sales revenue. We currently employ around one thirty-eight women full time. We have got four units now: three in Kanpur, one in Varanasi. We have also invested very heavily into R and D. So I would say that things are going okay, and by God's gra- like grace, it will go better in the future. so what has so, remained uh, core to uh, fool okay so the core to fool is uh, our two things uh, our mission is to uh, like uh, provide livelihoods by cleaning the ganges so these are the two mission one is to clean the ganges second is the livelihoods so in uh, what we basically do is we collect waste flowers from temples and we convert them into charcoal free incense sticks so normally incense that are available in the market are made from charcoal 
So what we've been able to do is we've been able to replace charcoal from the incense. That is one. Second is we've very heavily invested into R and D where we've been able to make a material from these waste flowers, which behaves exactly like animal leather. So we are calling it flower. That uh, is the short for floral leather, flower leather. So this material exactly has all the properties like animal leather. Is versatile, has the tensile strength, the elasticity. It can be tweaked to get any kind of finish, any kind of design. It has even better insulation properties than animal leather. So uh, the core. Uh, so one is uh, the uh, the production and the sales part of it, which is the conversion. of any effluent that goes into the ranges second is the choice of people that we've been able to employ so in india there are about 1.5 million manual scavengers so manual scavengers are people who jump neck deep into clock sewers and scrape human feces from dry toilets keep it upon their heads to finally walk kilometers to dispose of the human excreta and no one wants to literally even talk about this subject it's such a big taboo so uh, the mission is to like employ women from the community and help them not only uh, like have a life which is uh, which has financial freedom but a life of dignity and disease free life of dignity in respect so these are the two cores of food yeah and i remember talking to you about this uh, ankit is that there was a time when you were wondering whether you should do a social enterprise just focused on these women or here you've been able to create a successful entity and give them a livelihood at the same time instead of asking for donations to help them you are able to provide them with you know with jobs through the company that you've created so i really want to commend you that it's a very unique way uh, that you're solving the social cause that's really close to your heart uh, and through an enterprise and recycling at the uh, at the same time so tell me a little bit about um how do you manage all the log- logistics how do, how does it operate actually you know you have sure. a, i'm sure you also have supply chain logistics and all that kinds of stuff so how do you manage all this operationally sure okay uh, before that i would uh, want to like uh, tell you why i did want to go to the donation or the ngo route see yes. uh, if we really want to solve this problem right like india has around 8 million tons of waste large you need 10000 more uh, people like me to actually get into this and solve this problem and we indians wherever there's little money to make we indians put our head there so if i would have started an ngo i would have been a lone player but when i start a company then if it uh, does well many other people will try and do the same thing and we will be able to collectively solve the problem so that mm-hmm. is the thought behind uh, having a entity rather than having a and job based donation yeah. that's one now uh, to the operations and the logistics how how we manage so what happens is every day we have our own vehicles that go to these temples and collect these flowers bring uh, them to our unit where first of all all the like the uh, patthar which is the vessel in which the flowers are kept all the paper all the threads all the milk packets the plastic cups everything are segregated so now it becomes a uh, flower waste and every other thing is segregated then depending upon the species these flowers are separated like marigolds are separated roses are separate separated then what we have done is we have uh, developed our own bioculum that is sprayed on these flowers to offset any pesticide residue that might be there then uh, these flowers are uh, like sprayed with that uh, bioculum then these flowers are a uh, washed again and then sun dried then these flowers are pulverized then converted uh, depending upon their carotenoid level these are either converted into the incense or these are stored to make flower so this is how the operation works and once these incense are made generally uh, we are a d2c brand d2c is a direct to consumer brand where we cut out all the middlemen and directly sell the product online so the, uh, we basically sell 90% of our produce through online sales channels mm. now just to clarify when you uh, the process you use it's not chemical it's bio uh, process right so you don't use any chemicals in what you're yes, doing yes yes yeah so uh, can, yeah okay so can so, you just talk a little bit a minute about that what does it actually mean okay see the normal incense that is available in the market is made from charcoal so first mm-hmm. of all we've been able to replace the charcoal second thing is instead of uh, using any artificial perfumes 
we dip our incenses in pure essential oils and there's mm. uh, no alcohol in them as well so for example we still don't have a sandalwood incense because uh, people uh, like there are brands in the market that sell sandalwood incense for like 20 10 rupees 20 bucks 30 bucks even like 100 bucks so that's technically impossible like the sandalwood oil costs more than lakh rupees a kg you can't make uh, sell that for like 10 bucks so that is all chemistry that is being served to the consumer so we don't do that we uh, have uh, pure incenses like holy basil which is tulsi we have orange oil then vetiver all these or uh, indian uh, aromatic oils that are essential oils that are available we use them to make our incense rather than having a chemical process to it. so so we are also now uh, the world's first fair trade certified fragrance brand a uh, fair for life so there are people who say that they are certified but we have actually gone ahead and put our report uh, ma- like back to where our mouth is and we are india's first eco cert certified natural home fragrance brand as well so we have put a lot of science behind it like every single batch is tested for presence of any carbon molecule we even do a eds bombarding and molecule electron testing on the incense so those things are all done ankit how many units you have manufacturing units so so now we have four manufacturing units three in kanpur we have just started one in varanasi recently so currently uh, we do around 3.4 tons of flour every day in kanpur uttar pradesh and around 7 to 8 tons per day in varanasi so both are in uttar pradesh so what are your plans are you putting more uh, units uh, now yes so uh, we've just closed our fundraise the large fundraise round and now we are in the process of setting up two more units uh, so the aim is uh, to be able to at least uh, be able to employ 500 women uh, in this coming financial year so that is what the target is and how much time do you take to set up a unit so we take around uh, two and a half months now because uh, we have now we know there we know what kind of systems are needed what kind of space is needed uh, and everything so now it takes around 2 and 1/2 months and we are ready so at some stage you could uh, even franchise no your uh, yes. manufacturing yes, yes, you yes. could Actually, look at uh, st- st- so that this can be a, a, a source of income for a small family uh, they can set up uh, uh, currently how many customers you have So, so we sell online. We have around uh, two more than uh, around two point two lakhs of individual customers, paying customers who have bought through our website. And uh, we focus generally, like, see, I didn't have money. Very honestly, when we were starting, right? And uh, when you try and sell on Amazon and other e-commerce players, you don't get data. And you do, uh, like, there are other players like the traditional FMCG players whom you are competing with. And we didn't have budgets, so we tried. Uh, earlier we were just based on word of mouth and through our website so we tried and di- uh, like direct all the traffic to our website and uh, so that is how we've like like every stone on stone is like uh, it's, uh, it's so this, this is a big learning for a small uh, business uh, yeah. for them to adopt technology so is there any learning which you would like to give to the viewers uh, uh, on on setting up your uh, e-commerce your yes. sale a sale on your uh, website sure so see uh, first of all i would say that nothing is impossible that is the bottom line now once uh, because when i started every person i went to like in the industry they said incense you cannot sell online incense is a product no one will buy online why will people buy online you get it for 10 rupees in the kinara kirana shop no one will buy this so i went against all of that and i used shopify as a platform so uh, i would sincerely advise people nowadays setting up your own shop on a e-commerce platform is very very easy it won't take more than 2 2 3 hours of your time there are guided tutorials that are available online and it is very easy now so uh, if people can try use set up their shop on shopify it can actually you can see orders coming down and nowadays even like the fulfillment part like if you see the e-commerce journey it is it can be divided into three parts one is setting up the shop second is the fulfillment of order once you get the order what do you do next so now there are players like ship ship rocket easy rocket then there are sales cart and other softwares that help you integrate 
uh, for, uh, like all the logistics. So for example, you have to pack your product, keep it, label it. Someone will come at your home. They will pick up the product and then go and deliver it to your customer. Third mm-hmm. part is getting the payments. So even that is now fairly easy. Like when we started, it was still in the development phase. There were no straight answers, but now it is very fairly easy. Any, and you can reach out to any person on this earth. Like for example, we are based in Kanpur, which is a tier three city in Uttar Pradesh. There are very less resources. And from there, we are able to ship products all across the country from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. If we get so many orders from the US of people wanting to buy the product over there. Uh, so what we do is we uh, send the product to the airport where uh, their relatives or someone take up their products. So it's very easy if you want to set up an e-commerce now and is very uh, within budgets and it's easy to do. You know, I want to just insert a question we have from the audience. Uh, 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 it's from Ritika from Bombay. She's saying, you know, religious places have always had sentiments and sensibilities attached to them. So how did you manage to cater the sensibility while making your product more accessible? Did you have any issues with people um, in how you are processing something from a relig- place of uh, religion? Uh, see, um, uh, ma'am, when I started, no one had seen anything coming out of Temple East. And I was like 25. So everyone felt, what madness. Like, and uh, now when I like analyze this, there are two parts of this. One is uh, the priest and everyone felt, today this person is taking the flower. Will he turn up tomorrow? What is he actually doing this? Because I didn't have any answers. I couldn't explain what I'm what I'm trying to do. And if uh, uh, it's a religious, uh, it has a lot of religious sentiments attached to it. What if I go and throw those flowers on the roads? And what if uh, some issue happens and things like those? But slowly and slowly, when they saw that I am a regular and I am not trying to harm anyone, I'm trying to make incense, uh, which is again used in worshipping, uh, it became a little easier. Then I used a hack. In the Hindu arti, there's this line, Tera Tujko Arpan. So what I started saying was that you and I are no one to like stop this. This is God's will. These are God's flowers. And now he wants them back in the form of an incense. So it's not you and me who are doing this. It's the God who is doing this. So no one has an answer when it's the God's will, right? So that is yeah. the I so, uh, in, your, uh, 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 in our conversation, you had mentioned you started with few thousands. Yes. And uh, from few thousands, uh, when did you get the first funding? And how easy was you to convince your uh, uh, first funder? And uh, and you have subsequent funding also. So somebody who is looking to raise funds, wh- what would you uh, want to tell them? Okay. So see funding, the bigger challenge in funding is to be able to meet that person because generally what happens is good investors, good people, they don't have time. That is one of the biggest issues. And when we are starting out, we don't have links. How do I reach that uh, like investor? Like everyone says investor kaha milega. So what I used as a hack was I there are B plan competitions that are organized across the country by all sorts, every academic institution from an IIT, IIM to every engineering college, every uh, MBA college, they do a business plan competition. What happens is judges in these competitions are people from the industry, people from the investor community who actually have funds. So I met my first investor over there at a similar competition at IIM Calcutta, which uh, happens to be Manoj, Mr. Manoj Kumar, who was, who's heads the innovation at Tata and uh, Tata uh, on innovation and entrepreneurship. And he also started social alpha to fund uh, startups like us. So that is how I met my first investor. And uh, over there, I, I would literally say I, truly believe in uh, pitching in, in at business and competitions because there are two, three things that happen. One is you get like 10 minutes of dedicated time without anyone coming and disturbing you with that investor or with that judge. One. Second is you get advice for free. Like if you are able to maintain that relationship with the judges, you get that advice for free, which generally pe- uh, people pay so much to these consultants. And if someone see generally likes the idea, they either connect you with someone and things like those. 
so that is how it worked and uh, i would truly say now it is even become more easier because with linkedin and all these modern tools everyone you can simply approach have a nice email uh, uh two three tips are like make sure your email is very nice your subject is there don't use like slang don't use short forms like nowadays people when they're writing email hey like all those uh, like manilian slang and all those they are not very i wouldn't encourage them uh, when you being a, a proper email with solicited time which should give the other person the idea of why that person should give you that 10 15 minutes and if you get that meeting go crack it even like there are so many uh, like uh, online education now on how to make a proper pitch deck like a five slide ten slide just simply telling your idea uh, in a very succinct manner so there are all those tools available if people can use them well now i've seen like people even started like big investors they're now even investing over whatsapp so that is the level of investments that are going across in the country so, uh, so in the next if you have uh, to expand what is your plan for the next 5 years yes so in the next 5 years what we want to basically do is we want to at least make a dent in the leather industry because if you look at the animal leather industry so animal leather and, and livestock two industries are tightly coupled and these two industries consume around 30% of earth's green land mass 27% of earth's fresh water supply goes to this industry sir and in return this industry has the highest methane emission on earth which is 27% and we people don't think about it and whatever said and done we humans love leather because it delivers status luxury and comfort leather is like you it's your status so we want to make leather history we want to put a dent on the leather market so that is what we are aiming at and we want to at least have four more flower cycling centers and uh, when you said about the next 5 years our larger goal is also to be able to set up a micro flower cycling network where people who share the similar kind of bent and mindset we want to formulate our processes and structures in such a way that these people can literally pick it up and then replicate the model in their part of the country so that is the five year goal i i want to expand a little bit on what jani asked earlier uh, ankit sure. is it at all possible for this to become something uh someone can start in their neighborhood like a micro credit kind of a thing can someone do flower cycling off their local temple um in their community center or so i mean with i mean can you give a package uh um a, a tool set that someone can do it in smaller ways also and then l- latch on to your sales system and your products etc yeah so ma'am actually that is what uh, like we are currently working on we are trying to like formalize the processes and everything so that uh, see we have now got international grade certification so everyone we partner with needs to follow those same set of systems and processes and also the mission of being employing uh, being able to employ women that is a core to what fool does so to have the same uh, set of uh, like systems same level of empathy like for example we don't have a selection policy in in terms of whom we employ so it's a first come first serve we maintain a register anyone who wants a job just write your name there wherever there's opening we call that person we there's you are never sacked or penalized if something goes wrong or something like that we literally give like 2 3 months to a person like hand holding uh, to mm-hmm. like just gain that confidence and like yes it's okay to make mistakes you are we are all equal we're trying to yeah. make this work even in our factories now so we have like removed that supervisor layer uh, we are now like you you would find it funny but uh, like when we uh, employ people they don't even know how to write their name but after 6 months or so uh, now uh, that person is able to like read and write basic english and do maths and numbers every quarter we are do a exam literally there is a exam that happens uh, a test paper i'll send the whatsapp to you you can see it and according to that look whoever scores well they are rated and they become the leader for that quarter and uh, uh, every day there's a class that happens from 5 to 6 where we teach uh, everything apart from work so that mm-hmm. the women themselves become the leader in their in their own hierarchy and what mm-hmm. we've seen is there's so much of sea change now that there's such a strong sense of ownership in uh, in the work that the women have like even if we are not there the work goes on like like a smooth orchestra 
I have a couple of questions for you, um, uh, Ankit. One is about, we talked about flood. Uh, can you talk a little bit about Floraform, uh, this yes, packaging yes. material uh, yes. that you create and it, how is it being used today? Sure. So, uh, see, uh, uh, I very strongly believe that to solve this problem, right, like the any waste problem, there has to be a significant amount of R&D that needs to be done. The problem that I've, uh, or the challenge that I see in India is that we Indians are very um, R&D averse. Like we say that, oh, America is doing this, this country is doing that. But although there is so much of money that dollars that are spent on R&D, right? When it comes to India, oh, R&D ka koi use nahi hota. We just try and ape what the other countries are doing. Uh, from day one, I specifically allocated everything that we had. Around 40% 40, 40 of the total budget went into R&D. So we, uh, apart from leather, what we've been able to also do is we've been able to convert these flowers into a material that behaves exactly like styrofoam. So styrofoam or thermocol, as we call, Indians call it, is the fifth biggest pollutant on earth. As of now, mankind does not know a way to recycle thermocol. And the sad part is that 91% of thermocol is single use. Like, for example, you order a product. Uh, maybe from yeah. Amazon or somewhere, if you get styrofoam in it, you literally throw the styrofoam. No one keeps it at their home. So what we, uh, this material, we, we are calling it flora foam, again, uh, like uh, foam made from flowers, has all the similar properties like styrofoam, is lightweight, is white in color. And above, even above and beyond, this material does not burn like normal styrofoam because this is not made from petrochemicals. And uh, I am not even claiming uh, biodegradable, but I'm going a step ahead. And I'm claiming this material is home compostable. Uh, it completely decomposes once it comes in, like completely uh, submerged into soil bacteria in 45 days. So we are now, like with our, this recent raise, we've been able to set up our first unit of Floraform after so many years. And everyone I went to, like, said, this is madness, this is madness. Like, who, like, all the, those things of, like, ev like even like COVID-1, COVID-2, like, they were very harsh. All my R&D was washed away. It's a completely biological process. Experiments are long. Gestation periods are long. But we somehow stood to our this thing and hopefully things will be better. Yes. Which so, companies, which who are, who's using them today? So, uh, see, Floraform, we are under NDAs, but for Fleather, Tom Hilfiger is the first one to like sign a pilot with us. They've Sorry, given, who? Uh, Tom Hilfiger. So, they've okay. even okay. put money in the pilot uh, the first batch is being uh, it will be supplied to them. Around five different SKUs will be made out of it. So uh, like COVID two like and uh, had like put us like a little break on the R and D process and everything. But now things are smooth. So you you have been uh, <coughs> recognized as a UN uh, young leader uh, for SDG. So tell me uh, uh, tell us uh, uh, what all impacts you have made for sustainability and SDG. Okay. So, so uh, SDG, just for the wider audience, is the Sustainable Development Goals. So, the United Nations has come up with these frameworks where they, what they've done is they've divided uh, the, uh, the goals into 17 different categories, which together, if uh, the world achieves, the world can be a way better place to live in and uh, across all the parameters in terms of humanity, in terms of uh, like the environment, in terms of lives on earth, in terms of decent working condition, every single thing has been covered. So I am a young leader for the SDGs appointed by the Secretary General, uh, where I promote the women's uh, and champion the women's right uh, and decent working conditions of, uh, in India. So in terms of the impact that we've, I've been able to create through my work, one is uh, till date we have uh, like converted so. Uh, more than around one and a half uh, lakh tons of uh, waste of flowers from going into the river. Imagine the amount of pesticides and everything that would have gone into the river. That's one. Second is we employ around 138 women full time. Uh, so uh, out of these, what we've observed is around 70% of the women send their kids to school. So see, the change will not actually happen in this generation, but it's the next generation where the kids are able to go to school and the tag of scavenging and uh, the taboo is lost. So that's the second impact with the third, what we've now also moved uh, we're very aggressively moving on is we're trying to inculcate different streams of waste into our supply chain. For example, the ag waste, 
So if you're aware that Delhi and our capital re- uh, NCR region becomes a chokehold of pollution because of the stubble burning. So we have uh, not, for the f- making of flora, foam and flora, we're now decoupling the technology to be just not able to use flowers, but to also be able to use farm stubble as well. So those are the three basic okay. criteria. You know, I, uh, Ankit, I would love for you to tell the story of, I think uh, some of this empowerment is real and you talked about bringing dignity and sure. especially for manual scavenging women, there is a, you know, un, uh, unspoken untouchability in the neighborhood, you know. So why don't you tell us the story of sure. uh, so someone I, uh, whose yeah. life has changed? Yeah, yeah. I generally talk about, uh, there are like uh, two, so... So uh, once uh, uh, Jacqueline Nogratz from Acumen, she had come down to Kanpur to see our unit. And we were like fairly new, just starting out. And she asked one woman, uh, what is that uh, thing that you like working at school? And that lady pointed towards, uh, like, this is even like very bewildering for me as well, even today, when I think about it. So she pointed towards a plastic stool, and uh, which is not like more than 150, like 250 rupees, like around three dollars and she uh, we asked why it's a plastic stool and she said that i am like 55 years old no one has offered ever offered me a seat before so this is the first place where people have asked me like oaks or like you can sit on a seat so that's one now second is about prema so uh, when we're just like again like this is like in the starting days it had been like around a year when we were like started working and so one day this Prema, she started distributing sweets in the factory. And we were like around 70 people then. And I was like, hey, Amma, why are you wasting money? Uh, she was like, hey, no, I'll give half a laddu, but I'll give a laddu to everyone. And I said, what happened? Uh, and then she said, I bought a refrigerator. I'm like, you already have put money in a refrigerator. Why do you thanda, bring cold water? Why a laddu? She said that when she was like uh, 17 years old, the pay- place where she used to like clean the toilets, she wanted to have cold water. But the People didn't want her to touch their utensils, so they didn't give her water. At that point in time, she had decided that someday she would want to buy her own refrigerator. So after working with us for about seven to eight months, she was not only just able to save that money to be able to buy that refrigerator, but her like so-called upper-class neighbors who like uh, used to like earlier despise her, their children came and had water from our refrigerator. She said that now my children are equal to their children and I can die peacefully. So I think it's not just about cleaning the waste on the lands, but it's also about cleaning water on the generation. Yeah, yeah. That's great. And uh, uh, we have one more question from the audience. This Revati sure. from Shaka Patnam is asking, what are the ways you think in which India can revolutionize the way it manages waste? So I think the first and foremost and the biggest thing is uh, segregation at source. I, uh, so like, for example, Bangalore, Indore, these cities, they are way ahead in waste management. Simple reason, uh, waste is segregated at home. Uh, mm-hmm. And that is one of the biggest problems. If we just follow basic, simple rules of segregating our waste, first, three things will happen, three or even more. One is, it will be, uh, we will waste less resources in segregating the waste. That's one. Second is, mm-hmm. the recyclable waste, the metal, the paper can be put to good use. Currently, what happens, all of that gets mixed uh, and half of it becomes impossible to uh, reuse again. All like we are wasting two types of resources. One is in segregation, then that whole thing becomes non-usable again. So if we just do segregation and waste, this problem, the waste problem in India can be largely, largely solved. Mm -hmm. So uh, Johnny asked this earlier to you, but maybe you can expand on this a little bit of the future for Fool. I mean, I know you're going into Flutter and all these things, but if you think of what is the uh, ultimate goal for you 10 years from now, five years from now, 15 years from now, I mean, what would you like Fool to become known for? Uh, Is it in revenues? Is it the number of people you can influence? just give us some yeah. Pa- so, uh, parameters. Yeah. So uh, the biggest parameter for us or the one that I operate with is the change in mindset. So uh, Fool is bringing change in mindset at two levels. One is 
that uh, bringing that change in the orthodox temples that yes uh, waste can be recycled and that's one i want uh, like recycling units across the country where no- nothing goes off as waste in the landfills or in the river that's one second is the mindset change in the women that or, or like in the population that we are employing that everyone is equal and uh, like everyone can have a life of dignity and respect that's it. yeah just out of curiosity ankit how much uh, how much weight of flowers that an average temple in a neighborhood would generate and on the other hand how many how many tons of flowers do you think um, say something like a tirupati would uh, generate okay. just so we so, understand yeah. the weight yes. of flowers yeah so first of all this is very subjective reason being it completely depends on the size of the temple and the popularity of that temple that's one so so for example kanpur has around 3.4 tons of temple of uh, waste every day so, no, no, three, sorry point, 3.4 tons of waste every day every day every single day yes from how many yeah. temples is that so that is from around 73 to 74 temples now out of this major around 2 tons is uh, comes out of the three temples the three biggest ones so those are the bulk generators mm. okay. now even this varies on different days like of the week like for example different gods have different days so it changes across now and it changes during seasons and months as well so during savan during mahashivratri or the whole uh, or the like the festive days it is higher so it is like completely changes and now like we have developed this acumen over like a uh, 3 or 4 years of operation and we know ki ab kab kitna phool kahan se milega so that's there so tell me the highest you know which is the temple that you think like say uh, tirupati on a new year's day like what is the uh, no, maximum I think, amount no, i no so see maximum amount is like for example jagannath puri during, during the yatra yeah. they use around 50 to 60 tons of flour in a day so there is no day, limit 50 to 60 tons in a day in a day during the rath yatra days and see there is no limit like if there is a very high donation someone wants to do a very big shringar in the temple you can even like it's like impossible to like have a number uh, ankit see yes, it, it, uh, uh, hearing you i would i would also uh, uh, estimate the kind of uh, the trade in flowers so yes. so much of flowers are being sold and bought by yes. uh, by by the uh, the people who go to the temples so there is a, that is itself is a big uh, uh, business uh, it, again it's a, uh, a small business micro nano business but uh, uh, today we talk about a circular economy so you have uh, actually brought the full circle so there are vendors selling flower <laughs> so the deity gets the flower then the flower is sold uh, and uh, today f- flower is uh, recycled into uh, good sustainable products and uh, it's a uh, it was a great uh, I, I, actually it is a, the real circular economy works here <laughs> yes congratulations <laughs> yeah thank you, thank yeah. you. No, really, thank you, Ankit. You know, it's been really, really uh, amazing. Any parting words from you? What would you like to say? As no, first of all, I would like to thank you. I know uh, for you, it's very difficult to like not sleep, and it's like four uh, a.m. in uh, San Francisco. So that's <laughs> one. And uh, my very sincere thanks to Johnny sir uh, for two things. One, you're very, very humble with the kind of stature that you have. uh and you made it so easy for someone like me to talk to you so thank you for that and second thing is you are really giving uh, like indians like us like i am sure if i would have been of uh, like in the my beginning years i could have used help from muttu finance and uh, i uh, wish you luck that only every single day this movement grows larger good to hear thank from you. you and one of these days uh, we'll surely meet in kanpur and visit your real estate 100% also. 100% 100% yes yes <laughs> love to see that thank yeah. you yeah yeah and so everyone thank you so much for listening to us please continue to visit us on our website which is www.restartindia.com
in IN, uh, as well as all our social media pages for exciting updates. Uh, it's really uh, wonderful to hear from someone like Ankit. Please share this conversation with uh, all your friends so we can inspire many young people to start journeys uh, like this. This is your initiative, and we are here for the journey with you. And Ankit, it's always a delight uh, to interact with you. I mean, just so all of you know, Ankit has a very, very uh, busy schedule, uh, not just running the company, but also safeguarding the women who work there. And it's been really a privilege, uh, Ankit, to be on this journey with you. And best of luck in everything you do. Thank you, ma'am. All, all you, the best, Ankit. Uh, good to Thank have you, you for this conversation. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, you. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.